All right, I'm trying to get there. All right, there we go. So we're gonna we're gonna just briefly review what we did last time. We are using an allocation. Our allocation method is a four-step method, and you need to commit these four steps to memory. They are the same four steps we're going to use regardless of whether you use direct uh, allocation or step-down allocation. And I'm going to teach you both of those methods we're going to work on. We're going to teach you uh, direct today. And we'll see if we get to um, step down. Okay, so the four steps, just to refresh. Number one, identify the cost pool. This is usually a cost center, right? A cost center is an activity within an organization that doesn't bring in revenue, just has cost. So that's things like the finance department, right? HR, human resources, um, uh, housekeeping. Right? So those are, those are the activities within an organization that are really important. You can't run your organization without it. But in a larger organization, multifunctional organization, we might achieve some level of specialization where you actually have a separate HR department rather than the manager also doing the HR and also doing, right, also doing finance. If you're like in a small, uh, you know, maybe one or two position practice and you're the practice manager, you are the finance department and you are the HR department and you are, you know, uh, housekeeping manager, right? But in your, if you're in a large group practice with 100 physicians, right, or if you're in a hospital, you're gonna have, it's, a, it's gonna be a big enough organization that you're gonna have specialized uh, support, supporting operations, supporting activities, like an HR department, like a finance department. So the fun, what we're talking about here is a large enough organization that has some specialized functions. So we're gonna identify that cost pool. So let's just say it's like housekeeping, right? That's an example. We'll run with that, right? So then we look for, um, uh, uh, Cost pool, cost driver. And the cost driver is the thing that, as it increases or decreases, causes the cost pool to increase or decrease in terms of its amount of support it has to generate. So if this is housekeeping, right, we came up with a couple of different ways to, um, uh, uh, a couple of different possible drivers. One was, number of square feet, right? So the bigger our building is, the more housekeeping we're gonna need. And so if we're looking for a way to uh, allocate housekeeping cost, we might say, well, this department uses more housekeep, uh, has uses more space, has a bigger footprint, right, than this other one. So maybe the e ER, the emergency room, has 2,000 square feet or 5,000, let's say 5,000 square feet, and family practice has 3,000 square feet. Well then, because the emergency room is bigger than more square footage than the uh, family practice clinic, we should allocate more uh, uh, housekeeping costs to the emergency room than to the family practice clinic. Okay, so that's, that's an idea. So square footage would be an example of a cost driver. Another one would be to actually measure the amount of hours it takes to clean a particular activities space. Once again, family medicine probably runs, you know, 730 to five, five days a week, something like that. So you're going to have people and then the people that are coming in might be sick, but they're not probably going to be bleeding all over the place, right? Or they're not going to be projectile vomiting. Whereas that's what's going to be coming into the ED. And oh, by the way, the ED runs 24 seven, right? 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you're going to need housekeeping in there taking care of that, you know, that activity 24 seven, right? So that's a lot more work than, than family medicine. So like, even if the emergency department and say the family medicine clinic had the exact same square footage, it wouldn't be fair to charge the family medicine clinic the same as you charge, um, uh, or this, or to allocate as much, housekeeping cost to family medicine as to the emergency department because the emergency department just uses a lot more housekeeping services period regardless of how big it is so that's we need to think through those as as administrators 
we need to think through what's an appropriate cost driver. Once we have identified the cost driver, we identify the allocation rate. And that is basically just the cost pool divided by the cost driver. And what we try to come up with is a dollars of, of cost per unit of whatever the driver is. So if we're going back to our housekeeping, right? If it's, if it's square footage, we're going to say dollars of housekeeping divided by square footage. So we're coming up with a dollars of housekeeping per square foot. If it is, if it is um, hours of housekeeping, which was our second driver choice, it could be dollars of housekeeping divided by hours of service. So you come up with a dollars of housekeeping per hour of service. Either way, it's going to be identified, it's going to be the cost pool divided by the cost driver will give you the allocation rate. And that allocation rate, just to remember, is the rate that's applied across all of the supported organizations in the, in the or supported departments in the larger organization. <clears throat> then you get the allocation amount, right? Which is the allocation rate times the um, uh, amount of cost driver. This is not a simple equation in the supported department. So if I get, if I wind up with $10 per square foot, right, is my allocation rate for my organization, $10 per square foot, and my department, so then I would have $10 per square foot, and say my department has 2,000 square feet, that's the amount of cost driver in the department, then I would get 2,000 times 10 would be 20,000 allocated to a particular department. And then if department B, so this is department A, if department B has 3,000 square feet, then department B would get 3,000 times 10, right? <clears throat> Until we had allocated all of the housekeeping costs. So those are the, that's just a review of what we talked about last time. Four steps, identify the cost pool, cost driver, identify the cost driver, determine the allocation rate by dividing the cost pool by the cost driver. Allocation amount is the allocation rate times the amount of the cost driver that's in a particular department. Now remember the cost driver kind of the, at the organization level is a total for the whole organization, not for a single department. So if the whole organization has 25,000 square feet, that's what you use to calculate the allocation rate. You take the cost pool for the whole organization and divide it by the cost driver for the whole organization. So if that's you know $100,000 in housekeeping divided by 25,000 square feet, that'd be $4 per square foot, okay? for the organization. Then you say, okay, my department, this one department has 2,000 square feet. And so I'm gonna allocate, um, uh, I'm gonna allocate 2,000 times four, and this, or this was 2,000 times 10, 2,000 times four to this department, and then I've got all these other departments, and eventually that adds up to 25,000 square feet. Okay, so that's, we're gonna do that now. So those are the, that's what you need to keep in mind, is these four steps. So you're just gonna have to, for this chapter, this is the thing you're gonna have to commit to memory. All right, so the first method of allocation we're gonna use is called the direct method. Um, and it treats the support departments at, or cost centers as independent from each other. <clears throat> and then it, what we do is we directly allocate
uh, costs to profit centers. So what does that look like? Let's imagine we have just two cost centers. We have housekeeping and we have admin. And then we have two, two clinics. We have peds and we have internal medicine. So when I say, <clears throat> these are our profit centers. So our cost centers, our housekeeping and admin, our, our uh, profit centers are uh, peds and internal medicine. Why is housekeeping and admin a cost center? Because they don't generate any revenue. They just generate costs. What peds and internal medicine for our organization is where our revenues come in to. Those organizations also have direct costs, right? So what we're dealing with here in this chapter is the allocation of overhead costs. But these departments also have direct costs, right? PEDS has, so let's remember, PEDS is going to generate, they're going to see patients and generate bills, right? Sending out those bills, they're bringing in money, but they also have direct costs. They have nurses that are employed only in pediatrics. If you walk up to, you know, uh, this one nurse and, and you say, nerve, where do you work? So I work in the pediatric department. Well, do you ever work in family medicine? No, I only work in the pediatric department, right? So, so then she would be, or he would be a direct cost, right? We have supplies that can be clearly allocated to pediatrics. We have, um, yeah, that's good. So we have some things like typically your direct costs, personnel, supplies, those are very clear, clear cut. This is where they go, right? Internal medicine, same thing. Then they have overhead, right? They don't have their own housekeeping activity. They're part of a larger clinic, right? So we've got this big clinic with two big kind of organization with two clinics inside of it. And we've got a housekeeping service that services both of these organizations. And we have some administrative staff, a practice management group that takes care of all the admin stuff, right? So they're doing the hiring and firing. They're doing the billing and, and so forth. So what we're going to ignore in direct allocation is the fact that, or, or what we're going to say is housekeeping provides its services to peds and it provides its services to internal medicine. Admin provides its services to peds and its services to internal medicine. And we're just gonna try to figure out, we're gonna calculate a cost pool for housekeeping, a cost pool for admin. We're gonna calculate, we're gonna figure out an appropriate cost driver to decide how much admin should go to each of these organizations and how much housekeeping should go to each of these organizations. And then we're gonna um, calculate the allocation amount, the specific amount that winds up going to, from admin to peds and admin to internal medicine. So some share of admin, if there's a hundred, if admin is a hundred percent, right? So like it's a hundred dollars, let's say. We're gonna figure out maybe $40 of it goes to peds and $60 of it goes to internal medicine. Whatever it is, it's gotta add up to the whole cost center. Once we've done the allocation, there's nothing left in admin. All of its costs are allocated to either peds or, or internal medicine, depending on the steps we take. Same thing with housekeeping. We're gonna allocate all of housekeeping's costs to either peds or internal medicine. We're gonna come up with a method, right? We're gonna come up with an appropriate cost driver that will give us the allocation rate to charge peds and internal medicine for housekeeping. What we're going to ignore, which is what I started to say, what we're going to ignore under direct um, method is that housekeeping pro also provides services to admin, right? So the admin section doesn't isn't super dirty, but you know, they've got, paper and trash cans and they you know they eat their lunch in the break room and they leave a mess and you know and, they, and so there's trash and they gotta you know somebody's gotta vacuum the floor so so housekeeping isn't just providing support to peds and internal medicine it's also providing support to admin right but we're going to ignore that relationship for now we'll come back to that in the next one where we do step down 
a more full kind of perspective is to say, not only does housekeeping provide support to admin, peds, and internal medicine, but admin provides support to peds, internal medicine, and housekeeping. If admin includes HR, you know, and HR includes doing stuff like payroll, then <clears throat> admin also provides support to housekeeping, right? So if we were gonna, so there's a third method that we're not gonna cover because it involves a bunch of simultaneous equations. It's not worth our time because uh, this is more about giving you the concept rather than the specifics. Because in reality, if you work in finance, you're gonna have a computer program that does this for you. You're just gonna be like, all right, which kind of allocation do you want? Choose A, B, or C. A, okay, computer does it all for you, right? So this is really just kind of more for you to get the concept. Um, there's a third method that we are not gonna cover, like I said, <clears throat> called reciprocal allocation, which says admin provides support to housekeeping, housekeeping provides support to admin, right? and they kind of go back and forth. And so then um, there's a more complex method of allocating. But either way, at the end of the day, whatever system you're using, whether it is direct, step down, or reciprocal, all of these costs have to be allocated to the profit centers. So, direct, coming back to direct again. We're under direct, we're going to ignore the, in, the relationship between the cost centers and we're gonna treat it as if they only provide support to the profit centers, okay? So let's now imagine, let's give some specific numbers. Um, so here's our departments, housekeeping, um, admin, PEDS, internal medicine, direct costs for housekeeping is 50,000, direct cost for admin is 100,000, the direct cost for PEDS is 500,000, the direct cost for uh, internal medicine is 600,000. We have square footage, uh, housekeeping has a small square footage. It's got 500 square feet. Admin is pretty small. It's got 500 square feet. The PEDS clinic has 2,000 square feet and internal medicine has 3,000 square feet. So we have, for direct costs, we have a total of 50 to 150 is 650, 650 plus 600 is, is 1.25 million. We have square footage of 500, 500 is 1,000 plus 2,000 is 3,000 plus 3,000 is 6,000 square feet in total in the organization. And then we have visits. Well, housekeeping doesn't do any visits. Admin doesn't do any visits. Uh, PEDS does 12,000 visits. And internal medicine does 8,000 visits. For 12 plus eight is 20,000. <clears> We've got, and so these are our direct costs, right? And then these are our potential cost drivers. <clears throat> so the total organizational cost is, is 1,250,000. We've got 150,000 of overhead costs that we have to figure out how to allocate out. Right, so we're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna say, okay, I've got, um, I'm gonna take my admin, oh, sorry, take my housekeeping and my admin, housekeeping of 50K, admin of 100K, right? And then I've got PEDS and internal medicine, and I've gotta figure out how much of the 50K goes to PEDS, how much of the 50K goes to internal medicine? How much of the 100K goes to PEDS? How much of the 50, uh, 100K goes to internal medicine? Right, so what's a fair method for doing this? So first of all, so our four-step method, right? Four-step method, we've got our cost pools are the direct cost for housekeeping, that's the housekeeping cost pool. The direct cost for admin is the admin cost pool, right? So that's step one. We've identified our cost pools. They are housekeeping and admin. So next we have to decide on a cost driver. So if we're looking at housekeeping, 
based on the information we have, because we've got a limited information set here, what would be the most appropriate way to allocate housekeeping services? So, so we could use square footage, right? Ali says square footage. Absolutely, that would probably be a good one because like we talked about, if you have more square, if you have a bigger footprint, you have more square footage, it's gonna take more time, more, more expense to clean your space. And in this case, we've got a pediatric clinic and an internal medicine clinic. It's not like we're comparing the pediatric clinic to the emergency department or to the OR, right? These are pretty similar organizations that probably make about the same mess, right, on any given day, if you say, like, per square foot. So square footage would be a good one. What other choices could we do? We're looking for something that drives housekeeping, right, that makes housekeeping go up or down in cost. Krista, you could look at visits, right? Why visits? Why would visits drive housekeeping up or down? Yeah, so the more people that traipse through your organization, probably the more mess is going to be, you know, especially when it comes winter time and they're all coming in with muddy boots or snow on their boots, right? The more people that come and go out of your place, you're going to need to wash the floor more often. So that's, you know, that's accurate. That's a reasonable assumption. A third option would be just to say, we've got two clinics, so we're going to just divide the thing in half, and each of you get half, right? That, that would be, a, that's a super simple, viable, you know, allocation method uh, uh, or, or a cost driver, right? Number of departments, we just divide cost by part departments, everybody gets a, a share. So that's, an, you know, that's a, a kind of a third option. So we have, we have three options that we could potentially go with. Okay. Uh, how about admin? What would make sense for admin? Employees? Number of employees, okay, well, we don't have that information, so, but that would be a fair one, right? Because if admin is doing HR, then that would be a good example. You could always just say, well, we'll just divide it in two, right? That's one option, right? That we got two departments, we use the cost, cost driver is gonna be number of departments. Uh, so that's one. What else can we do? Would square footage make sense? Probably not, right? I mean, probably not, because if we're trying to figure out what thing drives the cost of administrative support, so we're thinking finance, HR, um, you know, scheduling, things like that, Earth footage probably has very little to do with, with any of those costs, right? So what else would be a good driver in that case? So do what? So the revenue's coming in? So that'd be a good one, yeah. Um, so you could look at, uh, Ali suggested the revenues. So that might be good. Why would you maybe, why would you maybe wanna look at revenues? Yeah, so if they're bringing in more revenues, then they might need more management, more support. Okay, Emma? So Emma's suggesting number of visits could be Blurred by the by the maybe the payer mix as to so when we talk because you're saying like Medicare versus Medicaid versus maybe commercial insurance, sure absolutely or it could just be blurred by the fact that um, uh, uh, the internal medicine clinic tends to bill out a higher complexity visit for every visit right so we talked about those you know nine nine two one five versus a nine nine two one three versus a nine nine two one one. Pediatrics is going to do a lot of well baby checks, right? That's one of the things they do. So I don't know if you guys have, you know, little siblings that you would have remembered, but like after a baby is born, that you, you know, you 
you bring the baby back like a week later to get a well baby check. And that's like a two minute visit, right? So that's a really low uh, intensity visit. Um, whereas if you are, um, if you, if you're, and then, you know, most pediatric stuff is like a kid has an earache. Okay. Anything else? No, just the earache. All right. Well, that's going to be, you know, quick visit, look in the ears, take the temperature. Yep. It's got an earache. Here's a prescription for, you know, for an antibiotic. Out you go. So there's a lot of low level visits. So pediatrics is going to do a lot of low level visits. Internal medicine, on the other hand, is seeing, is, is adult medicine, right? And in particular, as you get a little older, you're going to want to go to an internal medicine doc um, because those people are more specialized in complex illnesses uh, that tend to plague us people that get older. When you're younger, it's fine to go to, uh, you know, uh, family medicine. I don't mean to downplay family medicine. Family medicine docs can be very good. Um, it's just internal medicine. Uh, in my experience, is more specialized in complex in, in complexity, um, and so you're going to see, you know, pediatrics is going to have a kind of a lower like nine nine two one two nine nine two one three kind of average down there, you know. So they're going to have a lower number of RVUs per visit. Your internal medicine docs are going to be up more towards the nine nine two one four, maybe a lot of nine nine two one fives, right? As you get the old people coming in with lots of problems and they need a lot of time. Right, so you're going to see a, a higher, you're going to see a higher number of RVUs per visit in an internal medicine clinic than you are in a pediatrics clinic. Pediatrics is going to do high volume, low intensity. Internal medicine is going to do lower volume, higher intensity. We don't have that information here, but that's reality, right? So, so some of the stuff you guys are talking about is great observations and is in fact accurate, but we don't have that information really here. All we have is volume. We do have cost, so you could say, well, cost represents people and equipment and all that stuff. That's an admin function. So we could use total, just use your, your uh, profit center's direct costs as a driver. That's an option. We could probably not use square footage. We could use visits because a visit is going to generate a bill and the admin section is going to do the billing, right? And whether a bill is for $100 or $500, a bill is kind of a bill. Like if you're gonna write a bill, the effort it takes to write 500 as opposed to 100 is insignificant, right? The difference between those is insignificant. I remember when I was first looking at, um, when I was getting ready to take, to go out and take what we call an account, like my first CFO job, I was talking with my boss about the options that I that were being presented to me. And, he, and, and I was presented with, you could either go um, to, a, to a clinic, to a, a, a facility that had no beds, meaning it had no inpatient op op operation, and it had a bigger bud, a, a big budget, or you could go to a, a hospital, which had both outpatient and inpatient operations, but had a smaller budget. And I was kind of tempted to go to the, to the organization that had the bigger budget, and my boss said, you know, the only difference between, um, and I was, at the time I was out in Hawaii, at the, there's a big army hospital out in Hawaii. Um, and he said, really the only difference between managing my budget, which is several hundred million dollars, and the budget of that small hospital that you're looking at is the number of zeros in your checkbook, right? You write the checks, they're all the same. The decision making is kind of all the same. It's just my budget's got an extra zero on it, whereas yours, you know, won't. Whereas if you go to a clinic, right, you won't have the inpatient oper operation and you won't be able to learn about that. So he, want, uh, he wound up talking me into going to the smaller hospital, even though it has a smaller budget. So the point is, um, uh, I lost my point. The point is um, differences, yeah, differences in operations. Um, where was I at? So we were talking about visits, number of visits, right? So knowing complexity, uh, the visits could could make a difference. That was what it was. I was saying about um, in terms of you know, so what if internal medicine generates more RVUs per per visit, right? It's from the finance side, from the biller perspective, it's all the same. It makes no difference to the biller because the biller's got to write twelve thousand bills, right, or eight thousand bills. It doesn't matter if the dollar amount that the biller is putting on the bills is bigger 
for internal medicine, the amount of work is the same. So in some sense, there you go, right, is here's a real driver for the amount of work that at least billing is doing is visits, right? Because a visit generates a bill. And that's work, right? More visits, more work. So that would probably be a good one. Right? So there's a couple of potential ones here. We probably wouldn't use square footage. Um, we could use direct cost. That would be an option. I think that would fairly represent work. Visits represents at least a kind of work that admin is doing, but not a complete pers perspective. And this is the thing. We're never going to get a perfect solution. right? So you're going to have to make some decision at some point. Um, so <clears throat> let's assume then um, that admin uses visits as its driver and housekeeping uses square footage. Okay, so we're going to use ad, we're going to use visits for admin and square footage for housekeeping. Now, remember what we said. <clears throat> Let's start with. Um, well, we can start with admin. That's the easier of the two. <clears throat> so, with admin, if we start with admin. There is $100,000 in cost that has to be allocated to PEDS and to internal medicine. So 100,000 is our cost pool, right? We're saying our cost driver is number of visits. So what is our, what are we going to divide that 100,000 by? So what am I going to put in the denominator? 20, exactly. I want the organization's total for the driver. I don't want, I'm not going to do 100 divided by 12 or 100 divided by eight. I'm going to do 100 divided by 20, okay? So my cost driver is going to be total number of visits. That's 20,000. My allocation rate, step three, right? Step one, step two, step three. My allocation rate is 100 divided by 20, right? 100,000 divided by 20,000. Well, we can forget about the zeros. You say 100 divided by 20 is five. So $5 per visit is my allocation rate. Now, here's where I, I catch students all the time on the exam. And I'm just going to give it to you straight up. I tell you something like, here's some information. I give you something that looks like this on the exam. And I say, I need to know how much money, you're, how much uh, admin support you're going to allocate to PEDS. Right? And so what people do, because they get nervous on the exam, is they say, okay, PEDS is, uh, uh, admin is $100,000. Let's see. I'm going to identify the cost pool. That's $100,000. I'm going to identify, I know he's telling me that the cost driver is visits, so I'm going to use visits. So I'm going to go 100,000 divided by 12,000. That gives me eight and some change. And then I'm going to take eight times 12,000, and it's going to give me $100,000. So I'm going to allocate $100,000 to Pete's. Where, where, where did they go wrong? They allocated the whole amount to Pete's, right? But what they did was they divided 100,000 divided by 12 instead of 100,000 divided by 20. So when you're doing the allocation rate, remember that you're using the you're doing it at the organization level. So you're using the alloc and, and and I don't do that to trick people. They just I don't know why people just kind of I think you just get anxious when you're taking the exam and you get hyper focused on I'm asking you about peds so then you just use peds. But the allocate when you're calculating the <clears throat> allocation rate the denominator that you're using for the cost driver is the total of the driver for the organization. So that's gonna be in this case, 20,000 visits, right? Which gives us an allocation rate of $5 per visit. Then the allocation amount 
<clears throat> the allocation amount is going to be the driver five dollars times the uh, uh, times the cost driver for the department, which in this case for peds is twelve thousand. So allocation amount uh, allocation rate five times the um, uh, uh, driver for the department. So five times twelve is sixty. So sixty thousand of admin is going to go to peds, and then you know pretty easy to do the well if sixty is going to peds, then forty is going to go to internal medicine, right? But let's calculate it. So this is peds allocation amount for um, allocation amount for internal medicine is still five dollars times eight thousand visits gives me forty thousand so that's what we were expecting right and to check your work once you have allocated right you can add up the things that you the amounts that you've allocated so 60 plus 40 is 100 100 matches the cost pool so you know you've done it right because you fully allocated the cost pool, right? You gave 60 to peds, 40 to internal medicine, and now you're done with that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I will tell you the cost driver. I may ask you, so for, for if I'm telling you I want you to do this process, I will tell you the cost driver. I may ask you on an exam separately in a separate question, right? Because this one is testing, do you know the process? On a separate, you know, one, I may say, I may give you this information and say, tell me which one you would use. Like, okay, we're gonna allocate housekeeping. Give me two different ways that you could allocate housekeeping. So we can have, yeah, as long as it makes some sense, right? Yeah, so I'm really just kind of, what I'm looking for in a question like that, is for you to demonstrate that you understand that what I'm looking for is accuracy and cost. I'm trying to balance those two things out, right? And there should be some meaningful connection between the driver that I'm proposing and the cost pool that I'm looking at, right? So if you're looking at admin, you know, we could come up with a number of, like we said, a number of different options. We could look at the costs because that would represent management, right? So costs are management function. So we could look at the red costs. We could look at number of visits because admin would be billing. Um, probably not square foot because that doesn't, there's not really an admin function there. Same with housekeeping. We could say, well, there's a couple of different ways I could allocate housekeeping, right? I could, I could do it based on square footage. I could look at based on visits. If I had an actual number of hours used, I could use hours, right? And then I might ask you, well, which one would be, you know, what are the pros and cons, right? Well, if you use something like square foot, it's really simple. I measure it once, and then that's my ratio forever, right? Until we change the, until we change the, how the organization is set up. If I use number of visits, well, that's pretty easy because I'm calculating that anyway, so there's no additional work there. I just get the visit report, and then I divide you know, my housekeeping costs by my number of visits. So then again, you know, it's a new calculation every time, but there's no, there's no effort really put into this other than to divide, right? I've already calculated those numbers. The third one, which we don't have here, would be housekeeping hours. That would be the most accurate method, but it requires having a housekeeping manager keeping track of how many hours did actually get used in pediatrics, how many hours did actually got used in internal medicine, Right, that creates a new cost. That so it is more accurate, but it is also more costly to get that number. And so there's usually a trade-off in this process, and often in accounting in general, there's a trade-off between the cost of generating the information and the accuracy of the information. Right. So we could spend all day, you know, building our our financial statements that we talked about back in three in chapters three and four. We could do these fancy financial statements every month. Not really worth it. We do it once a year, you get an auditor to come in and clean it up, make sure it's just right. They do generate a financial statement on a monthly basis in most organizations, but it's not an audited financial statement. It's not the level of accuracy that you get to for the annual one. Just because the cost is really high, it takes a lot of manpower to do that. So that's kind of, those are, does that make sense? All right. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> okay, so now we've done admin, 100,000, right? We said the cost pool was 100,000, the cost driver was the 20,000 visits, right? So we wind up with $5 per visit. We take to get the allocation amount, we take the allocation rate that we calculated for the organization, right? And we multiply it by the driver for each department. So we take an organizational level allocation rate and multiply it by a departmental cost driver to allocate it to the departments. And then we're gonna do the same thing for housekeeping. Right? So the cost pool for housekeeping is how much? 50K, right? We said that the, okay, so here it's gonna be a little tricky. We said that the cost driver is going to be square footage. Anybody read the chapter yet? Do you know the answer here? What square footage am I going to use? No. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. So no, the answer, so, uh, so you, you do not use the total for the organization. You only use the uh, amount of the driver that applies to the supported departments, to the profit centers. So we're going to ignore the square footage that goes to the support departments, and we are only going to use the square footage that goes to the support, supported profit centers. Come on. Okay. No. So if we were going to use, let's say, remember I presented an option. So visits was an easy one because housekeeping and admin don't do visits. So that was kind of, that was kind of, sorry? It, regardless, we're, well, we're doing the direct method, right? If somehow housekeeping had visits, we would ignore them. But that doesn't, it's kind of nonsensical, right? Housekeeping doesn't do medical visits because it's a support department. So it was a little bit of a trick for me to start with ad, uh, admin and using visits because there are no visits in the other department in the in the support departments. However, if we had said instead of using visits to calculate admin, we're going to use total cost or, or direct cost. Remember, we said that would be an option. If we were going to allocate uh, admin based on direct costs, total direct costs we would have only used the direct cost of the supported departments. So we would have ignored the 150 up here and we would have only use the 1.1 million down here. So when you do, when you do direct method, when you are calculating the cost driver, whatever the cost driver might be, you ignore the contributions from the support departments, from the cost centers, and you only calculate up or total up the cost drivers coming from the profit centers. So if that was if the cost driver was going to be costs, direct costs, we would ignore the direct costs associated with the um, uh, support departments and only use the uh, 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 profit center direct costs. If we were going to do how, so, uh, if we were going to do visits, right? Well, visits is kind of it's negated by the fact that. Um, Housekeeping and admin don't have any visits. Uh, but if we were doing, say, personnel, if I had given you, you know, number of employees, and they had 20 and 10 and 40 and 60, right? If we were using, and then that would be 130. I'm just making these things up now. Not that well, the rest of them are made up too. So <clears throat> if we we're using personnel to allocate out admin, right, we would only use the the, the 40 and the 60 from PEDS under direct method, we would only use the, the 40 and 60 from PEDS to allocate admin. We would ignore the 30 personnel up in the housekeeping and admin sections. That's not true when we get to this change. This all changes when we get to, um, uh, to step down. But for direct method, so this is the key to remember for direct method, is when you do the cost driver, you are only going to pay attention 
to um, the, the driver amounts coming out of the profit centers and you are going to ignore the, the potential drivers from uh, the support departments. So that would be, you would total up direct, direct costs for peds and in, in, internal medicine. You would total up, in this case for housekeeping, you're just going to do square footage for uh, peds and internal medicine. Um, if you were using number of employees to calculate admin, you would just use the number of employees in the profit centers and you would ignore the number of employees uh, in, in the support departments or the cost centers, okay? So in this case, so that's a little bit of a trick. That's another place where people get confused. This is a key difference between direct method and step down. Step down, we consider some of the, of the drivers from the support departments, but not all of them. So it just makes it even more complicated. <clears throat> all right, so for, um, for housekeeping under direct method with this example, then we're not going to use the 6,000. We're going to use the 2,000 from PEDS and the 3,000 from internal medicine, giving us a total of 5,000. The allocation rate then is the 50,000 divided by the 5,000, right? 50 divided by five uh, is 10. So that's $50,000 divided by 5,000 square feet gives us $10 per square foot. And then we get the allocation amount for peds, right? Would be $10 per square foot times 2,000 square feet. <laughs> um, gives us 10 times 2,000 or $20,000. The allocation amount for internal medicine is the same allocation rate, but 3,000 square feet So 10 times 3,000 is 30,000. If we total that up, that's 50,000, which matches up to our cost pool to begin with, right? So what does that look like? We have housekeeping at 50,000, right? We have peds internal medicine, right? So we're gonna to send to PEDS 20K and internal medicine 30K, right? So <clears throat> after we have done the allocation, the direct method allocation, we've now charged internal medicine 30,000 for housekeeping, and 40,000 for admin. We have charged PEDS 20,000 for housekeeping and 60,000 for admin. So we can get a total cost for each of our profit centers. So total cost for PEDS is the direct cost plus the overhead cost, right? So the direct cost for PEDS we said was 500,000. The overhead costs were housekeeping 20,000 plus admin 60,000. So that's 500 plus 20 plus 60, that's 580. Right? And then the total cost for internal medicine again is the direct cost plus the overhead the direct cost for internal medicine was 600 
the housekeeping cost to internal medicine with, uh, oh, sorry, that's admin. The housekeeping cost to internal medicine we decided was 30,000. And the admin support cost we said was 40,000. So the total cost for internal medicine is 600 plus 30 plus 40, 670. So now we have a more accurate picture rather than saying, well, it costs PEDS $500,000 to operate, it costs internal medicine $600,000 to operate. What we find out is it actually costs 580,000 to operate PEDS and 670,000 to operate internal medicine. So now we could say, what's our cost per visit? That's a, that's a point of interest for us uh, as administrators. We can say, okay, PEDS has 12,000 visits. So 580 divided by 12,000 gives us 580 divided by 12, uh, 4833 per visit. And internal medicine has 8,000 visits. So we could say, all right, 670 divided by 8,000. gives us 83.75 per visit. Those are our fully loaded costs. If we ignored the um, overhead costs, we would have said, well, in internal medicine costs 600,000 divided by 8,000 visits. We'd say, oh, internal medicine costs us $75 per visit. But we'd be wrong, right, if we said that, we'd be wrong because that's only accounting for the direct costs. It's ignoring the fact that this internal medicine clinic sits inside of a larger organization and that larger organization is providing services to internal medicine that allows them to do the job they're doing. Without that additional support, um, internal medicine would have, to, would have to hire its own housekeeping. It would have to hire its own uh, admin staff, right? Instead, it gets to borrow that, those, that support from the, um, uh, from the larger organization. So a lot of times what you're gonna find when you, when you get out into the world, right, into the real world, uh, and you start moving up in, in, your, in your careers, is you're gonna be dealing, when you get to one of these support levels, like when you get to be in finance somewhere, or when you get to be a you know, chief operating officer someplace, you're gonna deal with departments and they're gonna just be very focused. They're gonna be saying stuff like, what, 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 my budget's only 600,000. Why are you telling me, and I did 8,000 visits, uh, my average cost is $75, right? And so if I charge $79, that's fine, right? I'm making $4 in profit. If I charge 79 and I, my cost is 75, look, I'm making $4 per visit, right? And you say, Hold on, Tiger. You know, you don't operate. Your actual cost of running your organization is not six hundred thousand dollars. You're ignoring the fact that the rest of the organization is supporting you and you know and and kind of keeping you going. Imagine if the housekeeping that that the organization pays for stops showing up. How are you gonna you know how are you gonna run your organization then, right? Imagine if HR stopped writing your paychecks. How are you gonna run that? And they think, oh, okay. Right. And so a lot of times, this is the uh, this is the argument you'll hear from you know folks who work in say primary care. If they're in a um, uh, if they're in a multi specialty practice, a lot of times they're told you're really a you're really a loss leader, right? And, and they don't want to hear that, right? That's kind of insulting. It's like, well, my my I'm not really contributing value. Well, they really are, and and so the message gets out the wrong way, you know. Your visits, you know, we might, your fully loaded visits 
you know, you might look at, at your direct costs. If you just calculate, okay, the cost of the doctor, the cost of the nurses that work in primary care, add all that up, divide it by the number of visits, it comes out to $75 and we're charging $79. What do you mean we're losing money? I'm making money on every visit. And I said, no, 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 you're, you're able to charge, you know, you're just looking at your direct costs. You're ignoring the fact that you can't function without the rest of the organization supporting you. And so the fact that we're charging $79, we're actually losing $4.75 on every visit that you do. Right? And that's the reality of most primary care functions in a multi-specialty practice. Now, that's not an accurate statement about, that's accurate about the primary care function seen by itself as, it, as a standalone function. But that's also not accurate um, uh, because multi-specialty practices need primary care to drive business to the specialties where the money is actually made for the organization. So you can afford to take a loss on your primary care because your primary care docs are gonna, gonna be like, oh, Aaron came in with a bum knee. Okay, we're gonna refer Aaron to, to Dr. Chloe the orthopedist who's now going to, you know, order an MRI from our radiology, you know, from our imaging practice. She's going to, you know, do a surgery in our outpatient surgery center on Aaron, right, and so on and so forth. So yeah, we lost five bucks on on the primary care visit, but we're making buku bucks, right, from what Chloe is going to do to her and what the um, what radiology is going to do and so forth, right. So you're gonna really hear this kind of discussion when you get out into the field. Um, and, and this is important to know uh, how this all works, right? So this is, uh, you'll, you'll hear a f the phrase, I, I think I just kind of tossed it out there, the fully loaded cost, right? Uh, is a common kind of phrasing that you'll hear. And that means, well, the baseline cost is 75, but the fully loaded cost, what we're talking about, the fully loaded cost means this actually reflects all of the other, the, the 75, that's just the direct cost. The fully loaded cost is all of the support that, that the department is getting from the larger organization. So that's why this is important, um, is, is when we get to pricing and knowing whether a service is actually making profit or not. So these are, and, and then PEDS, you could say PEDS, their direct cost was 500 divided by 12,000. So their standalone cost, right, is 4166, but in reality, it cost 4833 to provide a PEDS visit. Right? If they broke off, if this PEDS clinic broke off and set up its own practice someplace, right, and it was its own thing, separate, they would have to go ahead and hire administrative support they would have to go ahead and have higher housekeeping on their own in which case their direct their direct cost wouldn't be 4166 it would be probably even higher than 48 it would probably be more like 50 or 52 because there's an economy of scale right we talked about this last time the reason that these these practices come together and form a bigger group is housekeeping is expensive Right, admin is expensive, but if we can spread that cost over more visits, more activities, we can get a lower cost per unit. <clears throat> so, one of the big questions here would be one of the kind of follow on questions is what's the minimum price that pediatrics would have to charge in order to break even? Right, and the answer would be the fully loaded cost 4833 right in which case they'd make zero right? they're not making any money so whatever the price you're going to charge for pediatrics has got to exceed the fully loaded cost so it's got to be 4834 at least right or more you're going to break even at 4833 you want to make some profit so you want to make something right same with with uh so it's not 4166 it's 4833 Okay, so pediatrics might say, well, we charge $50 a visit. Look, we're making $8.33 on a visit. No, you're really making $1.66, not, not eight, right? If you charge 45 per visit, you're losing money on every visit. So that's, that's what we gotta, that's the point of this, um, of this process. Okay, 
So that's direct, right? That's where we only look at the relationships between the cost centers and the profit centers. And we ignore the fact that in reality, admin is getting some services from housekeeping too. So that's where we start getting into to step down. Now step down the mask makes my nose itch. You get to be an old man. Not that you guys are gonna to get to be old men, but uh, you know. Um, but we got a couple of guys who are going to eventually hopefully be old men in the class. You know, you get to be an old man and your hair moves from the top of your head to the, your back and comes out of your ears and your nose. It just happens at some point, um, you know, and uh, it's just kind of humiliating. Anyway, uh, so that's just one of the things that happens to us. You all have, you, you, Ladies have your own special uh, uh, futures to look forward to. My wife is going through uh, uh, her own time. She's, she and I are both 50, so she's got that special lady thing going on. Um, so anyway, uh, all right. So let's take our same, um, same organization. Let's take our same data. We're going to use the same data, but we're going to use instead of direct method now, we're going to use the step-down method. Um, and so what step down method says is uh, we recognize that housekeep housekeeping is going to provide some support to admin. So we're going to develop a relationship now between housekeeping and admin. And we're going to step down, meaning we're going to take, think of it like stair steps. We're going to take some of housekeeping's cost and allocate it to admin as well as to peds and internal medicine. And then that housekeeping will go away. We'll, we'll wipe out the $50,000. And that 50,000 will be have shared out, will, be, will have been shared out in the first round of, of allocation. We'll, we will share out housekeeping to admin, pediatrics and internal medicine. And then in the second round of allocation, we will allocate the admin costs which will now include the direct cost of admin plus a share of housekeeping to peds and internal medicine. What does that do? <clears throat> well, it actually makes, it makes admin more expensive when it gets allocated out. So the departments that use more admin um, uh, wind up uh, getting more, they actually get a little dose, an extra dose of housekeeping, if you will, because the order matters. The order of allocation matters in step down. Um, and <clears throat> what we're saying is admin can't function, right, without housekeeping. Um, and so therefore, uh, we have to add a little bit of housekeeping's bill to admin. And that more accurately allocates out the organizational support cost uh, to the supported departments. The difference here in this example is not going to be radical, but it is going to be, there is going to be a real difference. Okay. Um, so let's look at what that does. Now, one thing, sorry. <clears throat> okay. Um, what we're going to have to make a decision about is what is the hierarchy of support? Does admin do more support to housekeeping or is housekeeping more support to admin? Making that decision matters 
because it, it changes the step down process. Because you can think of it as, as, as steps. First step, we allocate the department, um, one department to, uh, or the first cost center to the remaining cost centers as well as the profit centers. Then in the next step, right, we allocate the next cost center. And in this case, we just have two. So, but we could have three or four or 10, right? And you just keep going down and kind of keep parsing it out. Um, and so admin winds up being a, you know, a more expensive thing than it, than it initially appears. So which one is, is, is supporting which, which is, you know, is kind of a, a decision you have to make uh, uh, as a finance person. Um, I would say you go from the least complex to the most complex, right? That's probably one way to say it or look at it. Regardless, just, you know, from a pure test perspective, this is a judgment call. From a pure test perspective, I will tell you the order, okay? So in this case, you, if I show you a problem like this, you can assume the order is as laid out, right? So if housekeeping is first in the order uh, here, then it's gonna go housekeeping to admin, but I will, I will tell you. But if you were actually setting this up in reality, you would have to think through, which is the, you know, um, which direction do I want uh, to go? Do I want admin to allocate to housekeeping and then housekeeping to everything else, right? Or do I want uh, uh, housekeeping to allocate to admin? And I would say you want housekeeping to allocate to admin in this case. Um, don't stress too much about that. So in stage one, we're going to come up with a, we're gonna use the same process, same four step process. All right, step one, uh, uh, cost pool. So the cost pool for housekeeping is 50,000 because nothing else has been allocated to housekeeping. So the cost pool for housekeeping is 50,000. Two, cost driver. Well, we're not gonna change our logic for the cost driver. We're gonna still go with square footage. Okay. Um, but what we're going to change now is what we use in the denominator. In this case, because we are saying there's a relationship not only between housekeeping and, pe uh, and peds and uh, internal medicine, but there's also a relationship between housekeeping and admin, the square footage we're going to use is peds, sorry, peds, internal medicine, and the square footage for um, uh, admin. So we're going to expand what we put in the denominator to include all of the departments that we're saying housekeeping supports. So we're going to have 500 plus 2,000 plus 3,000, 5,500 in our denominator. So the, instead of 5,000, which is what we had in direct, we're going to have 5,500. Now we're not going to include housekeeping, housekeeping square footage as well, even though housekeeping has to clean housekeeping square, square footage, right? So somebody has to clean the, 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 the broom closet. That's gonna be housekeeping, right? But the point here is that's kind of, that gets like reflexive, like you, <clears throat> the goal is to allocate this $50,000 to the, ultimately to the support departments. Now we're gonna go in a kind of a, using the step down method, we're gonna go in a little bit of a, a winding route, right? But our ultimate goal is to get these costs down here. So to allocate housekeeping to housekeeping winds up leaving cost in housekeeping and we wanna get rid of the cost out of housekeeping. We wanna basically clear this account, right? And bring it down to zero. And the way we wanna do that is by getting that cost and putting it in some other departments. So in this case, we're gonna take that 50,000 and we're gonna share it out to PEDS, internal medicine and IM, and then there'll be nothing left in, ho in the housekeeping account. And then eventually, and then in the next stage, we're gonna look at internal medicine at 100K plus its share of housekeeping. 
and we're going to allocate that to peds and internal medicine. All right, so let's keep going. So the allocation now, you have the pool of 50,000. The driver is now 5,500 instead of 5,000 because it now includes uh, the admin square footage. So the allocation rate is still 50,000 divided by 5,500. That's gonna be about $9.09 per square foot, which is less than the $10 it was before. But now we're going to have allocation amounts going to admin. That's my five minute warning. Admin, peds, and internal medicine. So I get 909 times 500 square feet for admin, 909 times 3,000 square feet for peds, and 909 times 2,000 square feet for internal medicine. And so the amounts wind up being 4,545, 18,182, and 27,273. Why did I do that wrong? That's not right. That'd be all. I, I, I must have reversed these. Yeah. It would be 27,273, 18,182. If you total that up, it's about 50,000. You're going to start losing because of rounding. You're going to start because that's like 909, 0909090909. You know, so if you cut it off, you're going to wind up having some minor rounding errors. So you got to watch out for that uh, on the exam. I'm not going to if you if you've laid this out and you're a little bit off over here. I'm not going to take points off. If you're crazy off, like I was just now, then I'm going to take a point off, right? Because you did something wrong, right? Which is in this case, I, I my notes. Um, you know, I'll take a point off there, but I can see you set it up right, right? So, um, so. <clears throat> admin winds up picking up 4,545 approximately uh, of housekeeping costs. Peds gets 27,000 and um, internal medicine gets 18,000. So now we have zeroed out housekeeping because we have taken away its $50,000 in costs. So if we look here, admin is getting 40, what did I say, 45, 45 is going down to admin. So now when we go to allocate admin, we're gonna do the same is the next step, right? Step one, cost pool. Okay, now it gets a little more complicated. It is going to be the direct cost of admin, 100,000, plus the overhead that it's picked up. Well, the overhead that it picked up was the 45.45 from housekeeping. So the direct cost for admin is 100 plus 45.45 of housekeeping. So the cost pool now is 104.545, not 100. Cost driver, we're only going to pay attention when we do this step down process, we only pay attention to the drivers that are below um, uh, the cost pool that's currently being allocated out. Well, as it turns out, admin is the last cost pool, right? So, and we only have visits for, for um, peds and internal medicine anyway. So this is pretty simple. Um, if we were doing, if we had a third unit, Right, and let's say it was based on employees. So if we had maybe HR or something like that down here, and HR had 10 more employees, and we were allocating admin, and we were gonna do it based on number of employees, we would say, okay, we're gonna take 
all the remaining uh, cost driver amounts for all the remaining departments. Well, HR would be in here, so that'd be 10 plus 40 plus 60, right? it would be 110. As it stands, we don't have that extra department, so we're only looking at the drivers below admin. And as it, as it turns out, those are visits anyway. So our cost driver is 20,000, just like before. Uh, our allocation rate is 104 divided by five, uh, by 20,000, which is, Uh, 523 uh, per visit, right? As opposed to $5 per visit. So then you do the allocation amount for PEDS, which is going to be 523 times, what did we say, 12,000. And for internal medicine, 523 times 8,000, right? And so we get, uh, Run out of time. 62, 745, and 41, 830. If you remember from earlier, I'm gonna have to stop here. We'll pick up uh, with this next time. If you remember from the direct method, PEDS got 60 and internal medicine got 41, um, 40. Uh, so now, that's not right. Yes, that's right, sorry. That's 104, 545, right? Which clears the uh, enhanced admin cost. All right, we'll finish up this uh, uh, next class. Um, so we made good progress. All right. All right, people of Zoom, we'll see you tonight if you're taking the exam. Otherwise,